There's a lot of work to do in the world. People are falling away from the church. There's a lot of hatred, division, and confusion in society in general. And churches themselves are dying. And Moses, there's a lot of work for him to do. His people were building and worshiping a golden calf. They were in the middle of the wilderness needing to be led to the promised land. There was a lot of confusion and division among them. And what was the last commandment, which we've talked about, is often the most important one that the Lord was giving to Moses? The paragraph before we learned that the Israelites were uh, making the golden calf. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, You shall keep my Sabbaths. Really? Sabbaths? My name is Jacob Hubbard, and this is Freedom Chapter 31, brought to you by Incarnate Ministries, based out of St. Thomas Aquinas in Pilot Point, Texas. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another day. Really excited to be sharing this message with you. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe uh, on this video, and just continue to share it with new audiences. So today, like I said, um, Moses has a lot of work to do, and this is the last chapter where he's up on Sinai before he comes down and sees the people rebelling with the golden calf. And the last command of the Lord to Moses is to rest. So while this is happening underneath, Moses is resting. Doesn't that seem a little crazy? I want to tie this into another passage um, that I think will help illuminate what's really going on here. And that's the transfiguration. And so in the transfiguration, uh, Jesus and a few apostles ascend up to a mountain. And there Jesus is transfigured before them. His clothes become swaddling white and Elijah and Moses appear on either side of him. And then they say, this is my, or God says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And specifically, um, we can look at the scriptures and see that it's a reference to Sabbath rest. And the scripture specifically says, and after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. That's a clear reference to Sabbath rest. Like, it was on the seventh day that they went up to this mountain and rested. And God is really helping us understand here the importance of Sabbath rest in that it helps us to receive our identity. And from that beloved sonship or daughtership, that's the overflow of which we give. And the apostles and their usual humanity, uh, they show us what not to do when we have this Sabbath rest encounter with the Lord. So when they're up there, Peter says, hey, it's great we're up here. Let's just make a tent for you guys. And let's all just chill up here for the mountain, on top of the mountain, uh, as long as we want, right? And I love that Jesus doesn't even recognize this. Like, he doesn't even um, respond. Like, right after this, it's just, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. It's like, Peter, what you say is just so irrelevant. I'm not even going to reply to it, right? But, but the problem with what Peter is thinking here is he's believing that we're on this mountaintop to stay on this mountaintop. And it's not that. It's that we are supposed to be filled with God's love so that from that overflow, from that abundance of his love, we give. We're not channels, we're reservoirs. And, and when we're built up all the way by God himself, it's out of that overflow that we give. So we also see the other extreme uh, from the other apostles who do not go up on top of the mountain with Jesus for the transfiguration. What happens? When Jesus comes down from the mountain, the crowd is going crazy. Everyone's kind of angry and upset. And there's a man whose son has a demon. And he says, Lord, your disciples were unable to cast this demon out. Jesus comes down and casts the demon out, no problem. What's going on there? Because the apostles down uh, on the base of the mountain had not ascended the mountain and rested with the Lord, they were giving out of their, their own selves and not out of abundance from the graces of the Lord. And in doing so, they were weak and they were powerless and unable to do what they were called to do, which was cast that demon out. And so here we really see the importance of Sabbath rest, not only in receiving our identity, but in building us up so that we can give of ourselves to the world around us. So now does it make a lot more sense then why Moses is commanded to rest before he goes down in fire and in passion uh, to kind of right the wrongs that the Israelites were going to commit by making the golden calf. Right? This rest was it's so important because it gave Moses the strength to be able to do so. He was operating out of the graces and the abundance that he received in that prayer. And then from that, he was able to um, do what the Lord wanted him to do and have the power to do so 
when he descended from the mountain. And so it's so essential that we are resting, not just one day a week, but we're spending time in silence with the Lord every single day, where we rest with him and just receive our identity from him. I like to, I like to journal and tell the Lord all that's on my mind, but just as important, if not more important than giving the Lord what's on my mind, is just sitting there and receiving his love so that I can be nourished and built up. And so any of the stresses that I give him, he can replace those with his truth, with his life, and with his love. Sometimes I think the best thing we can do for our families and for those that we love and for ministries and things that we're involved in is take a break and just relax and rest with the Lord so that we have the strength to get done what he wants us to get done. Because if we just work ourselves to death, we're not gonna have any life and the ministry probably won't bear much fruit because we're not giving out of abundance, but out of our need, out of, out of us and not out of God's grace, right? And so today's challenge is just to spend some time in silence with the Lord and first surrendering any worries, any anxieties, anything on your heart to him and then spend time uh, just receiving his love. You can even just repeat a simple phrase like the name of Jesus or come Holy Spirit and just receive the love that the Lord wants to pour into you so that he can operate through you daily. Thank you guys, have a wonderful day.